Well, Marta Andreasen is a Conservative MEP and former Chief Accountant to the European Commission. Uh, she's live in Strasbourg uh, for us now. Marta Andreasen, thank you very much indeed for being uh, with us. Were you surprised by the report? Not at all. I mean, uh, this is the story we have been having for the last two decades, I would say. When I was Chief Accountant in the European Commission, I could see what was going on. I could see that corruption uh, was widespread, that there were a lot of opportunities even within the European institutions. And what strikes me about this report is that it doesn't deal with corruption in the European institutions. You know, the institutions uh, manage the EU budget, so they have a responsibility. They distribute the funds, they have a responsibility. And they also initiate legislation. And here in Strasbourg, in Brussels, there's a lot of lobbyist activity that could give a rise to bribing or all this type of corrupt practices. Uh, now, the, 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 the report doesn't deal with these issues. OK, but, I mean, it should be said that you have got a history of being very, very critical of the uh, European Commission and have fallen out big time and, I, and were w at one stage part of uh, the anti-European party here in the UK, the UK Independence Party. Well, I have been critical as a chief accountant. I had to sign the payments, so I obviously was quite careful to sign for payments that are, I thought were, went to the right person for the right purpose. And, you know, it's my responsibility as chief accountant. Today, my responsibility as a member of the European Parliament representing uh, the southeast of England is to make sure that the funds that these people, the taxpayer in the southeast of England, put into the coffers of the European Union are properly spent. So but I'm doing my job. Sure. I can be critical in as much as they don't resolve the, the, the situation. Um, and in fact, this report is really vindicating me because it's showing that in this last decade, nothing has been done to avoid this corruption. Uh, I mean, you know, one of the things is this opinion polls as well that's gone with the survey, which says that indicate that three quarters of EU citizens consider corruption to be widespread in their country. I mean, I don't know whether I've been living under a sort of, you know, a stone for the past, but I don't see corruption. I don't hear people, uh, you know, either in Britain or in parts of Europe where I travel to, talking about corruption. I just find the figures very surprising. Well, maybe you're deaf, but I have heard a lot about corruption. And there are many circumstances in which I have seen opportunity uh, for corruption to take place. You know, here in this parliament last year, there was uh, an event where some MEPs were involved in corruption. It was uh, publicized by the, the press in the United Kingdom. So if you didn't hear about this, um, it's, it's really very unusual, what? but I think there is talk about this. You know, the report is naming countries like Bulgaria and Romania, where obviously we all know that controls are not in place. Now, the European Commission should make it very difficult for these people to get the funds. Uh, unless they are sure that they are going to be properly spent. It's well, an environment you, that you. leads let, to corruption. Sorry to interrupt you. Let me ask you this then. Do you think the European Commission was premature in letting uh, those countries uh, join the European Union before those safeguards were in place? Well, I think uh, this is the case. You know, it has been premature because they didn't get to the level of control, the level of accountability to be able to receive those funds and spend them properly. So I'm how many other countries would you kick out? The funds. I mean, if, you, if Bulgaria... Well, uh, what about Italy, where they talk about there's still a lot of corruption? Well, I think uh, the, I'm not going, uh, talking about kicking out. I'm saying they shouldn't have been brought in. And yes, we could ex go into Italy, into Spain. You know, all these people that regularly uh, have uh, misappropriated funds, they should be called to account. But you know what happens? The Commission only gets the money back from the government. The government doesn't recover the, the money from the final beneficiary, which means that the taxpayer puts the bill twice. You have been critical in the past. And this is something that people... Yeah. 
Sorry, sorry. You've been critical in the past about the European Commission not facing up to the problems of corruption. Would you at least give them credit now for producing a report which says, you know what, yeah, we have got a major problem with this? No, I don't give them any credit because they had, since I spoke, 10 years have gone by and they have done nothing to resolve the issue. They are just now coming to us and saying, sorry guys, we have lost 120 billion euros uh, every year in fraud, corruption and misappropriation. Do you think this is uh, their responsibility? Not at all. I'm not happy at all. I think they're being cynical towards the taxpayer. Marta Andreessen, I'm really grateful to you. Thank you very much indeed uh, for being with us. And just to say that uh, later on in the programme, we're going to be speaking uh, to the woman who launched that report, the European Commissioner uh, for Home Affairs, Cecilia uh, Malmström. Uh, that's coming up in just under an hour here on Global.